Liberia, I would have never known the history of the country if it wasn't for the Liberians that are coming to our church. I w couldn't even point it out on a map. Liberia is a West African country on the southwestern corner of the continent of Africa. It's a tropical country, uh, not too far from the equator. It's like an American colony. In the 1840s, the United States sent slaves back to Africa. They sent them to Liberia. So now there's a strata there between indigenous people and people that came back from America. It's a country that subsists on agriculture, but the country is also very rich in that it has uh, iron ore, diamonds, gold, and other natural resources uh, like hardwoods. They plant rubber trees there for Firestone Rubber Company. They use the American dollar. The flag looks American. It's red, white, and blue with one big star. The capital is Monrovia, named after James Monroe. So we have a certain responsibility as Americans to this little country. Uh, there's been 14 years of civil war that's left the country's infrastructure basically destroyed. Um, it's hard to imagine. There's no electricity in most places. The roads are difficult to pass outside of Monrovia. No major postal service. Just to send a letter is difficult. It's horrific. Take the Hurricane Katrina, and it's been like that for 15 years over there. No food, no water, no electricity. And you see these huge poles that supported the wires that carried electricity to the country. They're all gone. And you can see guys climbing up the poles, cutting the wires, to melt them, they get the copper out, they get some money. It's just bizarre. It once was one of the most prosperous countries in Africa, and now it's the poorest or one of the poorest uh, of all of Africa uh, and the world, in fact. During the war, over a quarter million people died in the last 14 years. Charles Taylor was a dictator, flat out murdered people, but he could pray beautifully. He would swear he was a Christian. And that civil war has caused um, displacement of families, refugees from the hinterland into Monrovia for safety, as well as a large amount of orphans. Many of them were found just randomly. Many children were starving. Some had injuries of war. Others had actually seen their parents killed. Most of them were just very very traumatized, as well as physically or emotionally ill. This little boy, three years old, and this person, 18 years old, is this the world that we came into? Because only thing they can remember is a lot of explosion. One whole orphanage home had to flee and hide in another place as the gorillas came through there and took anything of value and so all they had left were the cooking pots that they carried with them as they ran. Well, one time I opened the back of the truck, we had a driver who took us all around the countryside, and we had bottled water. And I opened the trunk, and I took the bottled water, and I turned around, and there was about 50 kids watching me drink this glass of water, and I couldn't, in my own conscience, finish it, so I just gave them the bottle away. Well, they didn't want the water. They wanted the, the container so they could fill the water up again at, at, you know, at the well. The, the family right now um, usually will make a little bit under a dollar a day. And so what's happening with the families right now is that they can't afford all the kids that they have. You know, we stopped at the lumber yard to buy uh, wood for the bunk beds. And uh, there was a big round tray there. And it looked like cereal. I said, my man, what's that? Because they say my man and everything. They said, it's boogabug. Or boogabug, what's that? They're termites. They're eating fried termites as a source of protein. And they give you a little tuna fish can, they fill it up and give it to you. So we all, t you know, we had to taste them since we were there. It will take decades for uh, the country to come back to some semblance of normality. Uh, currently, there are 15,000 United Nations troops in the country to keep the peace. Many Liberians fled the countryside to the city of Monrovia to escape the fighting and many have continued to be afraid to return to their agricultural land that they came from, their villages, because of fear of uh, continued violence. Women who were still um, 
alive and healthy would take in children and they just by um, fact of taking in children just became an orphanage. It's not something that is institutionalized or regulated or anything but just more of a sense many of these women are just called into caring for children without parents. My experience was very tragic because the president that was in power at the time, known as President Samuel Doe, is from my tribe. So the rebel was against him, and so my, my tribe became a target. And during the early part of the civil crisis, I lost my wife, and I lost my first son to the war. Reverend Tubman Sarpy uh, came to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in order to uh, seek uh, support for his work in uh, Liberia and uh, help the orphans and our church at uh, 10th Presbyterian Church uh, decided that we'd want particularly to focus on helping the orphans aspect of this ministry. 10th got involved with Liberia back in 2001 when we sent barrels to the orphanages and after that we received a video of the children smiling and praising God and thanking 10th for all the supplies. And it was at that point that I felt that these were specific children that God gave us to love. And then together with some other churches, we've since had trips to Liberia where food and medical help and um, school fees were given. There are three orphanages uh, total that we visited. We were very excitedly received. They put on a little uh, drama for us and sang as a choir for us and uh, one of the orphans gave a little speech. They sang with clapping of hands and playing a drum and uh, it was a very uh, joyful time and just uh, seeing their excitement, their hope, their joy in being with us and us singing together with them and teaching them songs and teaching them about the Lord and praying with them was a great joy. Uh, another little kid had malaria. They were singing, you are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome, Jesus name, you are welcome. And they have a certain class and they all sing it to us, welcome us to the camp. One of those little kids dancing around, he's got malaria. He's got like 104 temperature. His eyes are going cross-eyed, he's, he's going in and out. It's like his kid's singing to us. He's got malaria. So I think Dr. Bruce took him to the hospital, uh, Elwa Hospital, and, and he was admitted. What surprised me and struck me about these children that although they were poor, they had a joy about them and an ease, like most children do. There's a scripture verse that tells you that if you're poor, I'd rather be poor with the Lord than be rich without the Lord, and that's where they're at. They're poor, but they have the Lord. The conditions of the orphanages are vastly different. The third orphanage that we were involved with did not have a latrine and did not have well water. And these were some of the sickest children that I saw with some um, worm infestations, scabies, th things like this. One of the best facilities that we saw was run by a husband and a wife team. They had um, school in the morning, then chores in the evening, homework, and then bedtime. So that was a fairly structured environment. Presently at each of the orphan homes, they have uh, a pastor that works with uh, those orphans, and so they're given Bible instruction in their schools each day. They have devotions, and they have church services there on Sunday and it includes some people from the community as well. I think they have great um, leadership right now as far as having devotions and having worship that's consistent. Um, and I think they're incredibly thankful and incredibly hopeful um, despite this horrible situation and that's been ongoing. Um, I think they have a strong faith. When we first arrived, we just secured a hotel, which is a loose term because it was half the time the running water wasn't working, electricity wasn't work, always working, they have huge generators. And then to visit the orphanages and seeing what they need because we really don't know what they need. We found a, a sewing machine that was a great help to them uh, because some of the kids were learning tail, you know, to tailor and uh, textiles. So that task was really to help them uh, have an income. We went and picked up a bike for them to ride and to also rent out to the community so they could also 
have some income. They were thrilled about that. We bought lumber to build bunk beds because of the sleeping conditions. They literally sleep on a dirt floor or it'll take a bamboo pole and split it in half and then lay those halves of bamboo down and, and sleep on that. As we're driving along, we bought some coal. Uh, the way they cook over there is they have a small round container, fill it with coal, have a pot on top, and that's their oven. I was the only physician as a part of this group, but we did do some um, triaging where I um, tried to see some of the sickest children first and then um, basically do an inventory of all the other children. There were some children that were critically ill um, that we got help for. One who had um, pretty advanced malaria. We were able to get him to a local mission hospital and they gave him um, antibiotics uh, specifically for the type of malaria he had and within three days he was looking like a different child. I, I try to like simmer it down to the simplest goals, you know? <laughs> And, um, you know, if I could just sing, if I could just use my voice, you know, and sing to these children or just listen to their stories was a, a goal for, for me. And uh, I planted a garden. <laughs> and I looked among the children. It's like they are looking for somebody, will you love me? Or are you my parent? Or do you care for me? I have never encounter such depth and eyes crying out, will you help me? Are you here to help me? They would want to touch you, you know, and they wanted to be held and, and really touched. And I know the first time I got there, there was one little boy who was just crying uh, up a storm. <laughs> and I just was compelled, I was just moved by the Spirit to just pick him up. and. Um, he just, he stopped crying and he just, you know, he allowed me to do that and I just thought that that was even, that was a great experience just to, to be a body. The Bible is uh, very clear in numerous passages about uh, God's heart for the orphan, for the fatherless, the disenfranchised, and often speaks about the need for justice uh, for them and upholding their rights. God's heart for the orphan, I think he just cares for anybody who's lost, um, particularly those who are fatherless, don't have family. And the case of the orphan and the widow, especially, were to reach out and help them when they don't have anyone else. Um, I still get upset. I gave people my email address while I was over there, and they keep emailing me, asking me for things, and I just can't provide everything I want for them. And these are Bible-believing brothers in the Lord, you know. The Liberians here to say, Jimmy, you're my brother from another mother, you know, they're like, <laughs> or you're my brother of another color, and we're brothers in the Lord. And I, I always think that if it was the other way around, if you were an, an African and you were in that situation, I, and I was the other, I would have to do the same for you. My hopes for the orphanage is that it will be a place of refuge, uh, a bright light within that uh, country that has suffered so much oppression and darkness and uh, destruction and murder through a terrible war over 14 years and uh, many of these children having witnessed their parents killed, uh, many uh, witnessed horrific things or even experienced horrific things themselves. The main thing that I feel about the orphans is that they're specific children that, that Tenth and other churches have committed to. And since 2001, we've been reaching out to them. And that's why I feel strongly that we need to follow through on this ministry and see it through to its completion. The orphanages are making a tremendous difference for these children in that they had nowhere else to turn. It's life or death for them. Uh, so the fact that they're in these homes it means that they're able to survive and continue living and have a chance for a bright future. Uh, so as we are able to continue to support their livelihood, uh, we are able to have hope that they will make an impact in the future of uh, Liberian society and that they will help bring a Christian worldview into 
their life and how they live it in that society and to bring justice and righteousness into the country as they seek to glorify God with their lives. As the father of the fatherless, God has a heart filled with compassion for the orphan. Perhaps he is moving in your heart to help. Our calling as a mission agency is to show the love of Jesus by welcoming boys and girls into the family of God. The Rafiki Foundation operates orphan homes in several African countries and is currently constructing a Rafiki village in Liberia. Each children's center is designed to care for children from infancy to age 18. Our most important job is to teach the children about Jesus Christ and living for Him. In addition to proper nutrition, clothing, and medical care, we also desire to provide them with a quality education vocational training, and an appreciation of music, art, and athletics. Your generous gifts enable us to help the children the Lord handpicks and places in our care. If you'd like to make a donation specifically to the New Hope Liberian Orphan Project, please write Liberia Project Fund P326 on the memo line of your check and send it to the Rafiki Foundation, 19001 Hubner Road, number two, San Antonio, Texas, 78258. You can also call us at 210-244-2600 or contact us through our website at rafiki-foundation.org. Specific inquiries about the New Hope Liberian Orphan Project may also be directed to the Missions Office at 10th Presbyterian Church, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at 215-735-7688, also on the web at 10th.org. Thank you.